headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the pods, moving, and storage studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author, host of The Ken Coleman Show, is my co-host today as we answer your questions about your money, your career, and, of course, actual amazing relationships. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Paula is going to start us off this hour in San Antonio, Texas. Hey, Paula, how are you? I'm just fine, Dave, and you? Better than I deserve. Uh, What's up? (laughs) That's me. However, I'm trying to find out if I'm doing the right thing for considering my situation. I'm not trying to be an Elon Musk or a Bill Gates. I'm very happy at what I got, and I just want to live comfortable, and I'm doing that. But I have my mortgage paid off. I am 76 years old, and I don't work. I could, but I don't. I just choose not to. Uh, I have a $2,600 a month Social Security coming in. I have over a hundred thousand dollars in a money market. I have thirty one thousand in a saving, and I uh, save a thousand dollars a month. My bills are all paid at the first of every month. Am I doing the right thing? Okay, so you have no investments at all. No, I, that's right now. I am too scared of that with the market so volatile and everything going haywire. I don't want to play with the market. Okay. I just want to be comfortable and happy. And, and basically, I am. Okay. I just want to know if that's going to carry me through to my, you know, I'm, I'm, seven, I'm a young 76-year-old. But you're not using the money. No, absolutely so if you, not. If you continue like you continue, it would carry you on. To 176. Well, I plan to live that. I know. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. So, uh, no, I, I me got too. more energy than a 60 year old. No, I'm serious. That, that, that you're not using the money. And so, no. You know, it, it's if you were burning it, if you were going through it a little oh, bit, no. if you were, you know, eating $1,000 a month out of it uh, to live, but you're living on your Social Security, is what you're saying. I'm living on it and still have money sitting in my bank. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's if, money if that makes you with. happy, I'm not going to change it. No, I'm happy doing it. I just want to know if I'm if that's really the right thing to do for me. It sounds I like mean, it is because it's what it, makes you happy. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm not. I mean, very comfortable. now, it, 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 you know, if it was me, and, and uh, uh-huh. you know, I'm 62. I've got my uh, money in excess of an emergency fund. Uh, if I had that extra hundred thousand, I'm I am investing it into some good mutual funds that have a long, stable track record, um, because I'm not scared of the market, and that would not cause me yeah. to lay awake at night. But it sounds to me like that that would cause you to lay awake at night, so you shouldn't do it. Well, it would because you see everything going up and down, up and down, and and all the predictions of we're going to have a crash and all this, you know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let, let's just wait a minute. You, you and I are old enough that we've heard that every year <laughs> our entire life. Yeah. And it never happened. Uh, well, I don't. I, I believe what you're saying, but I'm one of these kinds that knows that it can. There's always there. It's well, a your bank can go broke. Well, yeah, and, and that's what another thing I have a question is. I my money, the hundred thousand or more, is in a money market choice money market. Now, if the banks go broke, or I know it's it's federally insured, or uh, or is it with a bank? Well, actually, it's with a uh, savings uh, a credit union, which is okay. So they've, they've got you. Yeah, yeah. They've, they've got NCUA. So yeah, okay. And that's it. I never get those. That, that, uh, you've got the same, you know, you've got insurance on the money if the credit union goes oh, yeah. belly up. And then the government mm-hmm. would have to go belly up, which is possible, too. Um, oh, yeah, the way they act. Yeah. And, I can and see then that. you would not get your money. And so that, you know, that's your absolute worst case scenario now. And if you invest the money, uh, it could go up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, but likely, mm-hmm. you know, there's no track record of it disappearing either. So, but I, I, I'm not going to push on it i mean uh paula this is making you happy yeah and you're oh, saving yeah. i just want to be sure i'm kind of doing the right thing because 
Like I said, I put back. Well, it's costing it's costing you about ten thousand dollars a year. It's costing me ten thousand a year. Yeah, if it was invested, you'd be making about a ten percent rate of return on average in good mutual funds, and on a hundred thousand, that's ten thousand dollars a year. So you're missing out on about ten thousand dollars a year. But you know, it sounds to me like it sounds to me like that's an insurance policy causes you to sleep, and I'm not going to argue with you about it. Well. That's that's what I wanted to know then, yeah. you know. That's all I needed to know, that I'm kind of okay with where I'm at then. You're not going to go broke. You're more than okay, Paul. You couldn't do something dumb with money if you tried. I just don't <laughs> think she's got it in her, Dave. She's so wise. Well, you I know? mean, the thing is this. Now, let's just talk back up and talk about it. Number one, that's her situation. And, her, and her, I, I don't think in one radio conversation I'm going to cause her to have peace right. with investing. But I will challenge all of you out there to the tune of $10,000 a year. I, to me, that means it's time for me to learn something. Mm-hmm. And um, now when she bought her home, house prices go up and down. She did not get a guarantee from the federal government or the NCUA. Her house price could go down tomorrow. But she's not concerned about that. You know why? Most of us, when we buy a home, we don't think about the fact that it's not federally guaranteed. The reason is track record. Track record matters. Mm -hmm. It does. And we, you know, we were just going through this, all the Ramsey personalities walking through it with you uh, in a room. And we were looking at this crazy, awesome uh, poster, essentially, that they opened up wide and they showed the history of the stock market and they showed how it did before and after some of the biggest events in American history when you would think it would create a lot of fear and instability, and it did short term, but then it always came back. And I think that was one of the most powerful illustrations I'd ever seen on what you teach and what you have been teaching. Well, and track record is a thing. Why are you comfortable buying a home with no guarantee? No federally insured guarantee, right? Because homes, if you got walking around since, have generally gone up over the scope of your life. I mean, First house I sold when I was 18 years old was $42,250 to a kid from my high school. Now, that kid wasn't smart. He bought a house from an 18-year-old. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, but I, and, you know, it turned out to be a really smart idea because that house today would probably be $350,000, $400,000, right? Wow, sure. Uh, but that's a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, we've all got walking around since we can look and say, okay, the track record of real estate is I'm not going to lose all my money. Mm-hmm. It might have a little bump in the road or two, but I'm not going to lose all my money. And if you actually look at the stock market, you know, with good mutual fund investing, good diversified investing, you're not going to lose all your money. There's going to be some bumps in the road, and you're going to make money. Now, that's the truth. But you need to get comfortable with that track record and that history like you did that piece of real estate, and then you can sleep at night. Never invest because Dave Ramsey said to. Always invest. Never invest because anybody said to except you. You need to get comfortable with it. You need to understand what you're putting money in. And then when you understand that history, I got a lot of peace about putting money in the market. No trouble for it. No trouble with it for me at all. We've been doing business at Ramsey for more than 30 years. By now, we're a well-oiled machine, but it wasn't always that way. Yes, we've always had a vision, always had determination, and a drive to help people, but what we didn't have was one central place to access all our numbers so that we could get further ahead or quickly see when we needed to pivot. We were always jumping back and forth between different systems and spreadsheets. So when NetSuite by Oracle helped us wrangle our revenue, inventory, expenses, and more into one place, it was a game changer. And NetSuite's number one cloud financial system can help your business gain the same visibility because businesses thrive on timely data. And NetSuite's real-time analytics can help your business have immediate access to your numbers daily so you always know where you stand and you can move quickly. So go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey today and set up a free product tour. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Hey, 
Hey, guys, if you like this show and you want to help us out, since we're doing it for you for free, you can help us out. We'd appreciate it. A couple things you can do. Uh, you can subscribe to the show on YouTube or podcast or follow or whatever you do on your particular version of how you consume the show. You can leave a review, five stars. No need to leave one star. Mama said if you ain't got anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. And you can share this with a friend. Just tell them where you're listening on talk radio or that you're watching on TBN or that you are, uh, you can click the link and share it if it's YouTube or a podcast link. So just uh, spread the word for us. Let people know that would be a huge help to us. It, uh, it really does matter. It affects the, uh, all the algorithms and all the things and causes us to be served up and so forth. And, uh, just, a, uh, just about a week ago, I think we're the number 19 podcast in the world mm. in, uh, size in terms of, uh, We've had over a billion downloads of the show now, and uh, 100% of that's because you guys told someone. So thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Sarah's in Houston. Hi, Sarah. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you guys? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Good. Well, I have a two-part question about a job change. Um, I just recently went through a job change after nearly 15 years with my previous employer, who I started with right out of college. So this is a pretty big shift. Um, so I'm trying to figure out is what is a reasonable timeline for feeling settled with this new job, meaning that you're understanding processes, you're building those relationships with people, um, and it's just understanding how things work. And then the second question is, how do I discern if, if kind of the overwhelming stress that I'm feeling is normal for starting with a new company after such a long time with a different company, and, or if it could be a symptom of a larger problem? How long have you been there? Um, I started, it's been about four months. What do you do? I'm a project manager. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, there's no set rule on how long it takes somebody to get settled. There's no, mm -hmm. there's no just hard and fast rule, but I will tell you that uh, being settled will happen when you get over some of the natural fears and doubts of starting something new. That's just natural. I don't mm -hmm. care what area of life we're talking about. We've been doing something for a very long time. And 15 years is a long time. It's the only culture you've ever known. The way they yeah. did work at that last company was all you've ever known. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the settling will take care of itself. I think the, the bigger thing that I want to know is what are your concerns? What are you feeling concerned about right now? I, I want to find out if there's some depth to that or if that's just kind of some natural stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess at my previous employer, I felt confident that I had built a very a good reputation and that, you know, my my loyalty to the company and my I always had the company's best interest in my heart. So if I, if I made a mistake, you know, it was kind of like, okay, well, you know, we'll work through that. At a new company, it's all new, it's all new people, and I have a lot of responsibility, and this is the exact kind of job that I've been wanting, so I, I love it. Okay. But so I'm also just afraid. That's 100% what's going on. So let's, let's, let's start with reality. In four months' time, you cannot build a reputation. You can make an right. impression. You can build a bad reputation. Yeah, yeah, you can. That's right. But but a good reputation is developed over time. So right now we're trying to make a good impression, and mm -hmm. and you're really worried. And I understand that. But here's the deal: if you look back on your past job, uh, you developed the reputation to where if a mistake was made, they understood this is a rarity, and this is not mm -hmm. a character problem, and it's not a competency problem. It's just the natural workflow. We all make mistakes, but you develop that over time. So give yourself a break. You got to remember mm -hmm. your history. You developed it before, you'll develop it again. And so what right now, this is a mindset thing. So here's a little exercise. When you start to feel that fear and, and kind of worry pop up during the day, you need to mm -hmm. just find yourself a quiet moment, even if it's just shutting down uh, the email. You, people think you're looking at your computer, but you're just going to run through a mental exercise. Is this fear have any evidence? Does this fear have any evidence that it's true? And if it has okay. no evidence that it's true, we know that it's our mind and it's based on fear and it's going to hold me back. And so then we flush it. If it's true, then that means fear is protecting you from something. But in this case, you have no history at all that says that you're going to make a bunch of mistakes at this new company in a job that you've longed for and you worked hard for. There's no evidence that says you're going to create a bunch of problems and mistakes that they're going to fire you. You would have to really intentionally do something boneheaded to get to that place. True or false? Yeah. True. All right, then. True. So believe in yourself, invest in yourself, and operate in confidence because you've been there before. Yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. Yeah. Okay. 
Anytime you do anything for 15 years, doing the same thing in a different place is going to take a little while, period. Whether it's job, yeah, whether yeah. it's job, whether it's a relationship, whether it's, uh, you know, you change cars. You've been driven one kind of car and you get a different kind of car. It's going to feel mm -hmm. weird going down the highway. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just takes a little while. It's just uh, whatever the thing is. And so because our human mind gets in a groove yeah. or a rut, one of the two. And, um, you know, and now you bumped up out of that and you're in the... Uh, you're in the land of adventure, darling. Yeah. You know, it's not unlike uh, I love what marriage. You're doing, by the way, when you when you've grown up. So we had a, we went to dinner with a young couple the other night, Dave, uh, Stacy, and I, and they just got married. Stacy and I are coming up on 25 years, and they were just saying, "What well, what advice would you give us?" And Stacy gave some great advice, way better than mine. But one of the things I said was, "Is that realize that first year is so difficult because you've grown up in one home." Both of you have grown up in different homes where there was a rhythm of how life was done. So maybe the dad did things this way in your home, but the dad completely did something different over here. And so you both are bringing expectations based on the environment you grew up in. And all of a sudden, you got two completely different expectations because of different experiences and environments. And so you got to learn to adjust to each other in marriage. And I think this is a very similar situation. All she ever knew was the way that company did work. And a company has a very unique culture. If you come to Ramsey Solutions and you've never been in a place like this before, man, it, it, it'll it blow your mind how we care for each other, how we communicate so unbelievably clearly, uh, very intentionally. And so any place, good or bad, is going to take some time because it's a really different environment. Yep. Yeah, it just takes a minute. Takes a minute to get your footing. It's that simple. So, Sarah, I like what you did, though. I like your spirit of adventure. Yep. I like that you stepped out on this I love and that. said, I'm going to go do something big. It's time It's time to shake off the cobwebs. And, yep. yeah, good for you. Good for you. It's going to pay off for you. It's going to pay off for you. Good stuff. Buvana is with us in D.C. Hey, Buvana, what's up? Hi, Mr. Ramsey. Thank you so much for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Sure. So I am 23 years old, and I'm going to be starting medical school in a few months. Congratulations. I want to first, thank you. I want to first of all say I'm super blessed. I was able to go to undergrad for almost next to nothing, and so most of my 529, I think, will cover all of nice. my medical education expenses. Sweet. Um, yes, my, my, my parents were really generous with that, and um, I'm almost certain it'll cover all the expenses, but I do have $30,000 in savings, and so I'm wondering whether I should – keep uh how to kind of divvy that up in terms of whether i should keep some of it just in case i have a couple thousand dollars left over that i do need to end up paying for if i should start investing because i know my retirement investments will be probably four to six years delayed compared to most people who are starting work now yeah and it'll so be four to six times more income mm. that's true so i think you'll be okay <laughs> Yeah. Listen, the best possible investment Buvana can make right now is in Buvana. Yeah. You are what's known as a cash machine. <laughs> you are getting ready to make some serious bank because dumb people don't get into med school. They, they don't let them in. And so, um, you know, you're going to go through this. You're going to graduate. You're going to pass your boards. And doing all of that with zero debt and starting off your career with zero debt is the best investment you can possibly make. You are a better return on investment than a mutual fund is. <laughs> That's good to know. Yeah. So just trap all that money. And I want you, listen, you did a lot of planning. You did a lot of uh, scheming and scamming. You've laid everything out. You've dreamed about this in detail. Now do the same thing for the money part of it. Okay. You sound a little bit kind of wishy-washy and disorganized about whether the money's actually going to make it or not. I want you to sit down and develop a plan where the money makes it. Your money makes it. And graduate with $30,000 still in the bank. That would be great. I want you to lay out a detailed HD, high-definition game plan to get through med school with the money you've got. And that's going to keep you from buying stupid butt stuff when you're tired, stressed out, taking some tests in the middle of the night. And so, seriously, lay it out in detail. This is The Ramsey Show.
Y'all, there's a lot you can't control when it comes to healthcare, but there is something you should check out that can help. Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not insurance. It is budget-friendly, biblically-based health cost sharing. That means a community of members helping share the burden of each other's healthcare costs. They help people just like you in all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Learn more today at chministries.org slash budget. If you've got debt and now you got inflation stealing more and more of your paycheck, I know a lot of folks out there feel like you're drowning. You're scared. Understand I've been there. It's no fun. And you shouldn't have to live with that kind of stress. If you want things to change, though, let me tell you who's going to change them. You. You've got to finally back up and say, that's it. I've had it. When you've had your I've had it moment, the next thing you need to know is how do I fix this dadgum mess I made? Let me tell you what. I've got the solution. For 30 years, we've had 10 million people now go through Financial Peace University, our nine-lesson course that will teach you how to get out of debt, become wealthy, and outrageously generous. And it really does work. It is the largest course on how to handle money in America today. By far, nobody's even close. Check it out. If you want to know more about it, just go to RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. And we can show you how to walk away from the fear. Is is it going to be easy? Well, crap, no, it's not going to be easy. Making the mess was easy. Getting out of it isn't going to be easy. And it's going to take you about half as long to get out as it took you to get in. So if you've made a mess for four years, count on about two years to get your butt out, not two minutes. We don't sell microwaves around here. Food isn't worth eating. We sell crock pots. No such thing. Ken, I've been all over America. I have never seen anybody put the phrase good microwave barbecue (laughs) in one sentence. That's exactly right. There's no such thing. Nope. No such thing. You got to cook it until the dog next door is howling. Low and slow. That's it, man. You just you got the, the animals. Animals have to be stirred up from the smoke. <laughs> That's how it works, man. Yeah. And, and life is that way. The good yeah, stuff, it's true. It, you, you know, it requires putting some calluses on your brain and on your hands. It requires doing some things you've never done and being uncomfortable, because yeah. comfortable is what got you into the dadgum mess. That's the deal. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Alec is in Atlanta. Hi, Alec. How are you? Hey, guys. So much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I recently completed Baby Step 3, and within the next two to three years, I'm going to have to get a newer car. Good. And when the time comes, I just want to know, should I use my emergency fund to pay for this newer car or should I, you know, start saving up money in a completely different savings account? We call it an emergency fund because you use it for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Buying a car that you plan to buy a year and a half from now is not an emergency. So you save up and pay for it. Aside from your emergency fund. Don't touch your emergency fund for something that's not an emergency. Mm. Does that make sense? Clear as mud. (laughs) Okay. Well, don't use your emergency. Buying a car is not an emergency unless your car just disappeared last night and you had no insurance. Sure. Now, that's an emergency. Okay. Mm -hmm. The car gets totaled and you had no insurance, right? That Mm -hmm. would be an emergency. But right Mm -hmm. now, you're telling me I got 18 months to save up for a car. That's not an emergency. Buying yeah. tires, going on vacation, Christmas is not an emergency. It's always in December. They don't move it. Follow the difference? An emergency yeah, is known sense. as an unexpected event. You've clearly made this an expected event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So there you go. That that hopefully that clears the mud up. But yeah, that that's what we're going to do there. We're going to save up and pay cash for it. And by the way, anything else you buy for the rest of your life, you're going to save up and pay cash so you don't fall back into debt. Fall back. Most people don't fall into debt. They strut. Oh the yeah. yeah. Sometimes okay. they jump into it. They jump days. into it like a yeah. jumping into the <laughs> death. Okay. You know, there's a hold on before you go there, Dave, because this is interesting. I'm just listening to that and the and hit the psychology going on and he's wrestling with that. And I think there's some other people maybe new to the show that are kind of wrestling with that too. Well, Dave, the car is just not going to last much more than 18 months. Why can't I use the emergency fund? And I think it's the difference between the expected and the unexpected. And there, it gets back to this financial peace phrase we use all the time on this show. Why are we so clear on that to say, hey, you know you need a car. Why is it a better financial decision to save up for that than it is to just go ahead and use that money that's already saved? No, the same because here's let, let's just be real clear if you use your emergency fund you have to stop everything you're doing and replenish it That's because correct. you're gonna otherwise you're going to attract an emergency right so um yeah it's not i, I used to work with a guy a thousand years ago he said people use their savings account as a put and take account put in take it out put in take it out put in take it out and and they never have any savings as a result it's just a it's a glorified checking account mm-hmm. that lasts a little bit longer than two weeks, you know. That's good. So it's a put-and-take account. And if you if you use your savings that way, instead of using a named account, okay, this, na- this account has a name, emergency fund. We don't touch it except for emergencies. This account is the car account. And if I use that money to buy a couch, no car, right? If it's the couch account and I use it to buy a car, no couch. So you by naming it, you realize you're violating your former intention because you're being an impulsive little child. Mm-hmm. That's typically what happens with me anyway. Yeah, you know, that's right. It's not a bass boat account. I mean, really, seriously, those fish are not going to outrun you. It's okay. And so you can get a, you can go with the old slow motor. It'll work. It gets you there. It's, it, they're still going to be in the lake. And uh, But, you know, we have to go 126 miles an hour, apparently, to catch a bass because they're really fast. <laughs> so, um, so it creates a boundary, a real mental boundary developed over time of discipline to say we're not touching this. And then well, we begin to adjust to that. It is a boundary, and, and, it, and it's a muscle in the same sense. It, you know, like one of the things I did for years and years and years, I don't do it formally this way anymore. I've got a different process now that we have the Family Foundation, but I did giving that way. Yep. And it was an interesting thing. Once I moved money out of my checking account into the generosity account, I didn't feel like I owned it anymore. Right. It was gone. I just hadn't placed it yet. That's good. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that was sure. It. But that, that was just a psychological thing that by renaming it, I had released the ownership of it already to generosity. And so it wasn't hard for me to give then when a need came up in front of us. Mm. It was just because it was already, in a sense, given. And now when we move it into the Ramsey Family Foundation, it's the same thing. It's just a little bit more formal, a little bit more sophisticated with Denise running all of our giving and all that. But the uh, uh, but but still, I still think, I mean, if you just earmark it for something, then you feel like you're violating something if you don't use it for that. Yeah. I, I feel the same thing happened to Stacy and I when we first started the envelope system because then it was like I would second guess. That's what you're if, supposed to do. If I know, but it's yeah. like you don't use your food mo- food mo- yes. money out of your food envelope. Yeah. Put gas in the car, right? Because uh, you can't eat gas, That's so right. it's not food. <laughs> so it's not an emergency. You don't use the emergency fund. It's not a. Yeah. And, and we don't use your car fund for an emergency unless it's a huge emergency and you had to liquidate everything else. But by then, you, you, what you're doing is you're realizing. You're, you're setting up boundaries, like you said, put in place to make yourself realizing you are changing plans. Yes. And you have to say, I am changing plans. And really, and if you're married, you're talking to your spouse about that, and you're going, we are getting ready to use the car money to go to Europe. Are you getting that? Okay. Or we're going to uh, use the Europe money to get a car, whatever it is, because mm-hmm. we're, we're changing the plan. And uh, instead of like... Instead of just living with this uh, waves of, of impulse yes. coming over us. And, and you, you own it, so you can change it. I could take money back out of that generosity account and buy a car with it. I can do that. But it's a change of plan, and, and it would feel weird. It's kind of like, here's another one that, where that comes up. If you ever move money, uh, if you ever put some money, even if it's birthday money or something, in a kid's savings account. Well, the kid doesn't own any money in America 
until they're 18. You can't do contract law. So that account is not in the kid's name. It's in the parent's name as a, with a, the kid's name of the parents as a custodian. You cannot, you cannot right. do business until you're 18. And so technically, kids don't own money. Shocking, I know. But technically, they don't. And so I could take that kid's money and buy a car with it. Because mm-hmm. it's not really their money. But wouldn't that feel gross? Yes, absolutely. That would feel gross. That would feel like I had done something like a bad parent or something. Yeah. Because you would be. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're a new listener and you want to get deeper into all this uh, backstory, stuff like baby steps and debt snowballs, go to RamseySolutions.com. Click on the Get Started button. It's completely free, by the way. And we'll help you figure out the best next step for your financial journey based on exactly where you are today. We will show you what to do next based on years and years and years of research and uh, experience with our customers and success. So get started. Click it at RamseySolutions.com. If you're brand new, we'll get you moving. Jeff's in Toledo. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you for taking my call, my friend. I just want to tell you right up front that uh, um, your riveting message has meant a lot to my family over the years. And we did FPU about 14 years ago. Changed my life. Changed my family tree. I'm honored. Thank you for that. Honored. Thank you. No problem. Um, my main question is, I think I did a little bit of a boo-boo, Dave, and I, I'm kind of retracting from it, and, and I, 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 I have a feeling that your answer is going to end up being not exactly what you want to say or what's best interest for me and my family, and here's why. So basically, um, my wife passed away about a year and a half ago of ovarian cancer. Oh, my. Wonderful Christian woman. I'm sorry. Um, she was a warrior. She was, she was, she went through FPU with me many years ago. It wasn't necessarily her strength. I was the nerd in the family and, and, uh, took care of the finances, but she, uh, while during this cancer journey says, I think we, I need to leave a legacy for our adult children, our upcoming adult children. And I said, well, how do you feel you want to do this? She said, I think we need to go to the title lawyer and include our kids in on the, on the, and do a quick claim deed and include them in on 25% of the equity in our home, which we have a hundred percent equity on a home in Finley, Ohio, that's uh, worth right about between 750 and 800 K. So I really don't. Uh, so what I did is I was in the midst of, uh, really all hands on deck with her ovarian cancer journey. And it was very difficult and I wasn't really in my right mind and I signed it. And I think that, um, releasing this money cause I, I'm actually getting married to a wonderful gal from Dallas, Texas, and she's incredible. We have a long distance relationship. Long story short, I really feel that, uh, I'm putting a house up on the market and we've already got a couple potential buyers. Um, I know the children are, uh, my daughter's 18 senior in high school and my son is 21 down in, in, in Orlando. And, um, so basically what, ha- what's going to happen is when we sell this home, they're going to get to the tune of about 175 K to 200 K each. And I feel like it's going to be, it's not going to teach them the right things. Um, yes. They, they each got early- 25%. Yes, I signed the quick claim deed. I thought you you didn't you didn't give them a quarter. You gave them a quarter each. A quarter each. So okay. if we sell it for eight hundred k, I got you. Be two hundred grand. Each. Yeah, I got you. Okay. All right, and um, so I I feel like it's teaching them the wrong message, and if they get they're getting a windfall at a very young age. Now, granted, they have the right to do what they want with the money. And I wanted to get your opinion on: Is it is is, is am I? Not a man of principle. If I if I try to retract this and let get them signed back off of it, 
before we sell this house, or is it a good idea to just follow through with my commitment that I made with my wife because she wanted to leave a legacy for our kids? Um, hmm. Trying to think what I would do. A good way to solve ethics questions is get on the other side and walk in the moccasins. Treat other people like you'd want to be treated kind of thing. And so um, I do not hear you wanting to take this money and buy your new wife a Mercedes. I hear you uh, worried about your kids being burdened with the weight of this. That's what I heard you say. And so you you are putting their best interest at heart. So that does not make you lacking in principle. It makes you quite the opposite. Um, What would I do if I were in your shoes? Uh, Because we do want to carry this equity into our our home that we want to live. uh, We want to live in Atlanta. I I, I think what I would do for sure is um, I I would do a will immediately and uh, and a prenup that protects their portion uh were you to pass okay and so and then i would ask them to i would ask them to deed it back to you and then you say i'm going to leave you all of the money from this house if i die and at a later point um you know as you guys get a little bit older i'm going to help you with some other things anyway but you're going to end up getting this all the money from the house not just a fourth each you're going to get a 50% 50% each when I die and mm-hmm. uh, because I'm going to protect that with a prenup and I'm going to protect that with a will. But my children are pretty bound and determined to get this money, Dave. Oh, well, that's then they're that's not going to the sign the quick claim. If they don't want to sign the quick claim, they don't want to sign it. If they don't want to sign it, you can't make them sign it. Yeah, I, I'm worried about oh, the absolutely. relational. I'm worried about the relational aspect. I think Dave's right. You know, put yourself in your kid's shoes to the best of your ability. You say you've told them this. This was your. This was their mother's dying wish. You told them it was going to happen, and now you're changing your mind. And, and we're not questioning the principle of the change, but you have to put yourself in their shoes. And what is this going to do to? your relationship and i think you have to consider that because that to me is the bigger long-term issue yeah you, yeah. you added you yes. added color to this equation when you said they didn't want to do it that was the first part first time in the conversation we heard that part so mm-hmm. that does change yes, and I, now again they're going based on hey this is our mother's wishes this yeah. is what we she, she really it was. now i was a little queasy well i don't care you it, did and it. i wasn't in my right mind yeah you but did, I did it. it um i did and, it and yeah this now, would have been the good time for the nerd it, to say no thank you that's a bad plan uh they're gonna get exactly it all when i die what? they're gonna get it all when i die anyway and no i'm not giving it giving them a fourth of the quick claim sorry you know, uh, that would have been the conversation at our house. But, you know, it's, uh, that's water under the bridge now. Now you got two kids that are expecting this and don't want to sign the quit claim. You are going to step in a relationship hole here, uh, and rightly so. But I don't think it's a matter of you're a man of principle. That's not the point. Uh, the, the point is more the relational thing that's going to get violated here. And so I think, I think they got the money, dude. I think you screwed up. The only thing yeah, you can do, only thing you can do is try to influence them. I'm sorry? Now, yeah, that, my title lawyer just told me the same thing. Well, there's no Here's question the from a title standpoint, you can't yeah. do nothing. But I, I was early in the right. conversation, I was under the impression you could get them to be willing to sign the title back over to you. And now you're saying well, they don't want to do that. Well, that's that you can't make them wrong, do it. Is it wrong for me to persuade them and get counsel to reverse that so that we don't you know, what a, what a tangled web we could weave here. If you can persuade them without them thinking their dad's a dog. That's the issue. You got to be careful because they may think, you talk about money here. and it, You just said they think this was their mom's dying wish. And, yeah. you know, you're going to get, now you're fighting with angels. Do you want your kids thinking that you're greedy? That's the risk. On no, this. absolutely not. But I will I tell that, you, I will you tell know, you, I think that's the risk. a little of the tail wagging the dog here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, the only thing I would probably do here is say, listen, if you all don't want me to handle this for you because it was your mother's dying wish, I understand that. I, I really think it's unwise for you to get $200,000 at 18 years old. I'm your dad. I love you. And I think it's going to be a problem for you rather than a blessing. But I can't, I, I'm not going to go back on my word. If you choose to give me this quarterback, I will protect you on it. But if you don't want to do that, um, 
then I'm not going to, I'm not certainly not going to force it. I, I am going to do my best as your dad to persuade you to do smart things and not let this be a problem for you. But, um, but yeah, it was, a. um, you know, it's horrible to say in this situation, but it's a really dumb idea. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, but you're stuck with it now. And yeah, you can't force this. You can't go in before the judge and go, uh, your honor, we want you to reverse this. Cause I really wasn't thinking clearly that one won't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. The judge is going to go, whoops, sorry about that. Stupid text time. So yeah, hopefully you can just persuade them, uh, that their best interest is at heart. And if you can't, then persuade them to do something wise and let you help them help lead them through good decisions with the money. But I think the money's probably gone, is what it sounds like to me. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Open phones this hour, 888 5225 My co-host today, Ken Coleman of The Ken Coleman Show, author of the number one best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose. He is our Ramsey personality, specializing in jobs and careers. you got questions along those lines. We're certainly here to help. The phone number, 888-825-5225. Mark is in Detroit. Hey, Mark, what's up? Hey, uh, thanks for taking my call today. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve, sir. How can we help? Good. Uh, my wife and I are 42, 42 and 41 years old, and we've made it to baby step seven. And I'm calling with a question on what we do as far as an intentional act uh, for our goal that we have for retirement. Um, we own everything that we have. We have zero debt, zero credit cards, and uh, I think about $350,000 in an investment um, portfolio at the bank. And my question is, is um, our goal is to purchase land in eastern Tennessee and uh, build a house and retire there. Um, in about seven to 10 years. And the question is, when do we pull that money out to purchase it? Um, because I know land in that side of the state goes up kind of quick and yeah. investments can raise too. So when do we pull that trigger? Is it sooner rather than later? Or do we do it right before we are ready to build and move down there? Yeah, I would do it right before you move down there. The land, land in East Tennessee isn't going up any faster than anywhere else. That's not, I mean, uh, I'm, Grew up, I mean, I was born there. I grew up in Tennessee. I've been doing real estate deals all over Tennessee, including the mountains of East Tennessee. So, no, it's, 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 it's good. It's a good, it's a good plan. I love your plan, but it's not like, you know, you're going to get priced out of the market or something. So, what do you make? Um, so my wife and I, our take home is $150,000. Excellent. And yeah. Good for you. So, okay. So, you got seven years to pile up some cash. What's the size of this project, do you think, money wise? Um, I'm guessing between purchasing the land and building it, that we're aiming some probably were around eight hundred, eight hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. And our current home is worth five fifty to six hundred. Okay. Um, and with the money that we have in the bank and the money that we can make uh, between now and then when we're retired, you have the money now. Fine. If you sold your house, you could go do it now, but you are just not ready to do it right now. Yeah, it's a matter of it's a matter of uh, I have seven and a half years to go until I retire, and yeah. when I retire, I'll have a pension for the rest of my life and my wife's life. And yeah, but my uh, point is, the five hundred fifty thousand dollars house plus three hundred fifty thousand dollars in investment portfolio today, you've got the money, right? Correct. So, I mean, if you liquidate both those, boom, we got it. Now you would have no money left after you did the deal, but you got the money. Right. So, so you got seven years to build your nest egg is what it amounts to. Now, your three hundred fifty thousand invested at the bank is that um, in good growth stock mutual funds? 
Yes, sir. Okay. And so if the money earns 10%, it will double every seven years. Yes. Sir. So that 350 will be 700. Okay. Oh, by the way, your $550,000 house is going to be approaching a million dollars by the time you get to seven years. Right. Okay. So right there's a million seven. That's with adding nothing to what you've already got. And of course, you're going to add to it. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're, ex we're expecting to yeah. try and throw at least 60000 at it every year. Yeah. So what I would do if I were in your plan is I would enjoy the adventure of this whole plan. Yeah. And that means I'm going to, uh, in about three years, I'm going to have a big old pile of cash added to that 350 in some good investments. And I'm going to spend a year poking around the hills of East Tennessee, figuring out where mm -hmm. I want to set up camp here. Yeah, we had, that's where most of our money has come from, actually, that uh, we had some real estate down there, and then we sold it um, when all, you know, when everybody started moving to that to that area. So we sold it, and then we've just invested that money. So um, we have an idea of where we want to go, and we've kind of been poking around that area. Okay, so we you, sold it still, you, but the adventure continues then, right? Yes, sir. Mark, yeah. to, to... it's okay to go ahead and buy the land as long as you're ready to pay cash for it. Yep. Yeah. It's sadly my, my wife, uh, sort of like a baby step slash yes, ma'am program. So, um, she is very much on, uh, purchasing everything with cash, no mortgages ever again. And yeah. I'm very much on board with that. So, so what do you think nice you're going to spend on the land? Um, well, it, it kind of depends. First, we started out with mountains, and we were thinking about a hundred thousand. And then, uh, then when she saw mountains with a lake, uh, suddenly that budget got a little bit higher. So we're. I'm, I'm going to try. I think we're trying to limit ourselves to no more than one fifty. Well, so you could buy the land whenever you find it, then. Yes, sir. That's that's the question. Well, that's okay, but you don't have to um, buy it because it's it going to go now, up. Buy it now. Yeah, or do we wait? I'm just going to. I like. I. I like the art of the deal. I like hunting for stuff, looking for a bargain, finding the right thing, walking away from you. You have abs, you have seven years to discover the coolest property of all for one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and write a check for it when you find it. But there's no rush. Yeah, Mark, I'm curious. Do you plan to never work again, or do you plan to just take a couple years and see what happens? Uh, so I'm probably going to, after seven years, uh, my, my kids will have three more years of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll probably work until, uh, they're all out of high school and into college and we're already putting money away for them for college as well. So they can go to You're going to work from free. East Tennessee? Uh, yeah, I'd love okay. to. Okay. I wouldn't mind it at all. I, I, I figure I have to do something. I can't just. Well, you probably ought phone, to do but... something anyway. Yeah. It's just good for yeah. you. Yeah. Man, it's not made yeah. to completely retire and do nothing. I I agree. People die I, it's when they do that. Of, uh, trying to figure out, and that's what I'm working on now too. Is right. what do I do when I retire? Well, and the reason I um, ask the question is because that brings in some money to this equation that we haven't talked about yet. It's not like you're going to completely go from from what you're making now to zero. So it just it just furthers what Dave is saying, man. Just go enjoy it and find the right place when you find it. But you don't need to go buy something now because it's going to price you out right. between now and seven years. It's not. Okay, it's not. And But I would enjoy the process of looking for a good deal on a killer piece of land with some lake frontage or whatever it is you're looking for there. That would be neat. I would, And there's some beautiful stuff in the area you're talking about. I mean, world class. Uh, it's pretty property. country. It's, re it's beautiful country. It really is. So, yeah, there you go. That's what I would do. Now, that the cool thing about this is that you're going to be fine because you're actually doing it on purpose. Where people screw up with this kind of stuff is when they just they wake up one morning and go, Oh God And then they just you know, you know, and they just have this moment and then they go that's when you go buy a beach property that you yeah. should have never bought. Land in fever. Ever. Yeah. You just get this weird thing going <laughs> and then and then you wake up three months later going, I the guy in my mirror is an idiot. Yeah, you know, that kind of stuff. Because he who is impulsive exalts folly. Mark on is the opposite end of that. He's yeah. super intentional planning way way out there um yeah very very interesting very interesting hey good call man good work this is the ramsey show
Look, I love real estate, and I want you to have a house, but I don't want a house to have you. That's why you need to get in touch with Churchill Mortgage to make sure you do this right. These guys are awesome. They'll help you get on a smarter mortgage plan because they're committed to doing what's right for you. That means they check in every year with free consultations to help you stay on the right plan. They show you how to save money and interest so you can build wealth faster. They walk you through the total cost of your loan so you can make the best choice. Basically, they care. That's why we call them Ramsey Trusted. You can achieve debt-free home ownership, and Churchill is here to help. Go to their site, churchillmortgage.com slash Ramsey, to start your approval or get more information. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions at 888-825-5225. Jonathan in Idaho gives us our question of the day. All right. Sorry, Dave. I was slow on the draw. Here it is. Uh, I was wondering if you have an opinion on the proposed Fair Tax Act that would eliminate federal taxes, impose a national sales tax on new goods purchased, and eliminate the IRS as we know it. <laughs> That's the perfect question for the two of us. I don't know two people that hate taxes more than me and Dave Ramsey. Um, well, I, I've always been a fan of this. In fact, well, I lived for years in Atlanta, and Neil Bortz, who was a well-known local talk radio guy, you're probably friends with Neil. I know Neil well. Uh, he was a big proponent of this and, and, and wrote Went a book on it. Went on a show on several times yeah. back in the day talking about this. Yeah, and I, he had a book, I like a best-selling book on Best-selling book on this very issue. And uh, I'm not going to endorse the book, nor am I going to endorse the policy, but I like the direction that it's heading, uh, and I'll tell you why. Um, I, I think a sales tax, uh, it, it forces the consumer to kind of deal with it, and, and it's not the federal government mandating what is taken from my income. Um I, I like the flat tax idea, which is really the the guts of what Neil Bortz was was kind of proposing, and that's everybody pays the same tax rate. There's this cultural divide now that the media uh, and, and a lot of people on the left have created this fairness doctrine that the person who makes more should have to pay a higher percentage, and it's become this virtuous idea. And in all reality, if you look at the actual data, now, folks, some of you are going to get offended right now, and that's okay, but here's what I want you to do. While you're getting offended, I want you to actually go on this thing called Google, and I want you to do your own research. Be brave enough What's to that? research what I'm saying, because here's what you'll find. Most people in America, in fact, it's right below 50 percent, no, I it's, believe. It's now 51 percent. 51 percent. Dave, correct me. Don't pay any federal, federal income, income tax. tax. And yet we're going and after— wait a minute. And let's go a step further. Yeah, sure. And a large number of that group not only don't pay, right. they receive— That's correct. —the unearned income tax credit. That's right. Meaning they get money back from the government. It's only it's not back from the government because they never gave it to them in the first place. You it's an entitlement. It's they— are given that's right their, their lives are subsidized and and you're not you're not evil if that's you okay yeah. we're not mad at you about that that's the system that's in place but 51 percent of americans pay absolutely nothing yeah so this idea in the federal income tax program right. that that's not that's not fair that's right so then they say not only that's happening but now they want to have people who are wealthy who help create jobs by the way who help create enough tax income for all of the entitlements that those 51% get, you want to put more burden on those folks. So I love the flat tax that is kind of— well, this uh, is, The fair tax is a sales tax. It's exactly. not the flat tax. I know. But I, I love the actual flat tax on an income tax because I think that that is truly equitable, and everybody now is paying the same amount. And so, you know, well, there, I'm a the, fan the of The that. actual fair tax act is not 
up for vote. It's that not is so correct. Jonathan, I don't know the way. I don't know where you got this. That it's actually happening. Yeah, it's not. It's not even close to happening. It's a, it's a, uh, a, a, you know, a discussion to try to get people jacked up, and yeah. it's been going on for twenty plus years. That book is worth reading because the biggest gripe that people have mathematically, and it's a fair argument, um, it is that. Under a fair tax, a uh, an ad valorem tax, a sale, national sales tax, and no income tax at all, then you would have to, you would need to, it would, for it to be correct, uh, for it to be equitable, not fair, mm-hmm. for it to be equitable. And Bortz's proposal, the actual fair tax people are proposing this, you would have exemptions on things like food. Yep. Because if you make thirty thousand dollars a year and you pay in or you pay sales tax on everything you buy, you end up paying a larger percentage of your income in taxes than say I would, mm-hmm. and that's not equitable. Correct. Okay, uh, I wouldn't want a single mom making twenty thousand to have, uh, you know, have a, a higher tax rate than I do. Yeah, that's not right. And so you have to have some exemptions in there on income and on types of purchases to make the thing start to have some more equity to it. But the beauty of it is you consume, you choose. That's correct. Now, in the state of Tennessee, this is actually what we have. We have a moderately to high sales tax, nine and three quarter percent, about 10 percent. Okay, is our sales tax in the state of Tennessee. And uh, we have zero income tax. And our economy is booming. Yes. Yeehaw. Because because people come here like crazy mm-hmm. that are producing things like jobs and businesses. And they come here, they're, they're moving in here. The same thing with Texas, same thing with Florida. The, the states that don't have an income tax have prospered inordinately. Art Laffer has written a lot about this. That's right. And uh, so it's a very interesting discussion. Now, you can get all pissed off and lefty or righty about it one way or the other if you want. But that's, you know, the, you probably ought to just listen to one of those political shows to do all that stuff. That, that That's not political. This is math. Right. Okay. Uh, it is not equitable, not fair for people to pay absolutely zero. That's correct. Whether they're rich or whether they're poor. And 51% of Americans pay zero income tax at the federal level. Zero. None. That's a half of you. And it kind of describes why the voting falls where it does. It actually, the voting falls about that way, okay, on national elections. And so... You know, and it, and it, you're right. It has been trumped up by the that's bad, bad phrasing, but bad phrasing. Yes, but right. It's been it's been pushed by the uh, the media because they can sell hate. That's correct. And you know, make the poor people hate the rich people. The rich people hate the poor people. Yeah. All this kind of stuff. This class division mm-hmm. thing. And it, you know, if we can create division and keep people angry, they'll keep watching our news channel. And that's not a good plan. So. Uh, I, I mean, I've spent a lot of time I, back at 20 years ago. I, I was on board to show several times. We discussed this. It was a very interesting discussion. Yeah, it's, it's well good, thought out. It's a good intellectual yep. exercise. But Jonathan, here's the truth. It's not going to happen. <laughs> that's that's the other side of it. OK, yep. you're, you're not going to get right. a fair tax, a national sales tax to do away with the IRS. Your your lips to God's ears that the IRS went away. But <laughs> uh, but they're not going. It, it's there's too much going on here. I mean. Here's the thing. You put the income tax business out of business. And the, I mean, you're talking about H&R Block, TurboTax oh. are gone. Gone. Oh, yeah. Just poof. Well, all the entitlements. They have nothing to do. All those government the, agencies. Are, you think they're going to be for this? No. No. Yeah. Yeah. The entire establishment will never allow this to happen. The people could make it happen. But outside of that, that's a whole yeah, different show. Yeah, you'd have show. to just fire everybody's whole butt that's up show. there, which yeah. really would be a great idea. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it would be. But, you know, it's interesting, you know, because when you start looking at this, you got to understand, too, that you, we hear inflation in the news every day. Let's talk about one of the most hot bed issues, uh, hot button issues in America right now is inflation. But here's the deal. If 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 the people of America in mass, let's say they got a hold of what we teach here on The Ramsey Show. And they all started budgeting and they went to the envelope system. They used those wallets and they did everything the way we teach. And they said, you know what? We're going to severely cut back on all of our excess spending. Okay. Four walls, 
That's it. Watch how prices would come down, Dave, because these could yeah. target and Walmart. If, Rams, if all Ramsey go, met the mo- if Ramsey met the minimalists, minimalists in the minimalists, I can't even yeah. say it, minimalists yeah. in the in the marketplace, yeah. and all of America adopted. For you know. 90 days, Dave, I think 90, oh, 90 days, days is all. It'd be, like, it'd be like putting people on strike. Yeah. And then watch, it, it watch would, prices it would come shut down. shut the freaking place down. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd get some uh, bozo's attention. Yeah. I got to tell you, I mean, bozo's attention. <laughs> it would put yeah. some dent in the inflation. And because but we spend like drunken sailors as Americans, credit cards no, at an all-time high. Sailors get a bad reputation. Drunken congressmen. That's a fair point. They spend a lot more. That's true. Sorry, don't be sailors. Mess, don't be messing with our sailors. Both They're my good grandfathers people. were in the Navy. I should That's stipulate. Right. It well, is a great old saying, and it I it, it was more <laughs> more stereotypically true in the old days. But yeah, there we go. Oh, so Jonathan, sorry. It's a good thing to give us a little soapbox on here, but appreciate you asking the question. Not going to happen. Um, wouldn't make any of us mad if something like this or something moved this yes. direction, where everybody everybody ought to put something in the. You know, everybody ought to put something in the pot. You ought, yeah. you ought to pay your military. That's right. You ought to pay for your interstate you're driving on. Everybody ought to put something in. This is the Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything, from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to save up to 40% off everything site-wide. Go to Blinds.com for more information. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Abby's with us. Hey, Abby, how are you? Hey, David Ken. Good. How are you? Great. How are you? You look like happy, Abby. I'm super happy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Where do you live? I live in Indianapolis, Indiana. Awesomeness. And how much debt have you paid off, Abby? I paid off $51,511. Cool. How long did this take? 29 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that two and a half years? Um, I started out at 48000 and and um, with all the other jobs at up to 68000 Cool. What do you do for a living? Um, I was working as a cancer, um, at a cancer research organization as an administrative officer, but I just um, started my own business and went full-time in January. Uh, I'm a pet care professional. Oh, cool. <laughs> cool. Making more than you were. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Good for you. So what kind of uh, debt was the $52,000? Um, everything. So um, student loans, uh, credit cards, um, a family loan, medical debt, a car. So about... Kind of normal. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 32. Okay. So what happened when you're 30 years old and you're looking around going, this is not working? How'd you get connected to this Ramsey way? So uh, I first heard about you from my sister. She's my twin over here, uh, Rebecca. She um, got her and her family, um, they got out of debt using your program too. Um, and then 
she told me about it and she gave me your book for Christmas. But of course, I didn't care too much. I put it in a closet um, oh, for a couple of years. Oh, you're that twin. I am that twin. <laughs> <laughs> the evil twin. <laughs> no, <laughs> but she, yeah, she gave it to me and I didn't really, yeah, pay too much attention to it. But I did have every dollar for a couple of years. I just didn't really get into it. But um, I meanwhile, you're watching her <laughs> succeed. She was listening to it and I was just like. Well, yeah, but cool. you're watching her succeed. You watch, you knew she was doing good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Then what what snapped? Um, so I think around COVID, um, is the thick of COVID 2020 in August, September, um, I was already going through a really difficult time, like emotionally with relationships and financially it was really hard. I would always look in my bank account and see like negative 75 cents on a Tuesday and I don't get paid till Thursday and no gas in the tank. Yeah. Um, so that was like often, um, something that happened to me and then I would always have to like borrow money from a friend my sister <laughs> she would like um and it was embarrassing um and like even like one time and uh, I was on a work trip and I was supposed to um I, got, I arrived to the work trip I thought the hotel was paid for trip um I had kind of screwed up and didn't have the hotel paid for so they asked for my credit card car and I had no money so I kind of had like a panic at the mini panic attack in the hotel room again had to borrow money for a short time to get that paid off um, and it was one of many of those things um, that happened and I just was sitting in um, actually with a counselor at the time and she was doing the same thing um, your program to get out of debt God, he's everywhere yeah it's everywhere <laughs> and I thought like maybe I'll just start listening to like the Ramsey show and just see what happens and so I, I started listening to it then um, and then I figured why don't I just go and um, do financial beast. So um, I started that. I didn't know how I'd get my first first thousand uh, because when I did my budget, there was like over budget even after I did like all the minimum payments. But somehow in the first uh, couple months, I got my first thousand, and then I just started paying off. Um, I got like a extra eight extra jobs um, throughout the two years. What was your best extra job? Um, Money wise, I would say like probably either like pet sitting or chipped. Those Interesting. Pretty, now yeah. I got to know, did that spark the interest to this new self-owned business? You entrepreneur, you debt-free entrepreneur, you. Yeah. And actually thanks to you too. Yeah, it was, um, I've already always loved animals and I've uh -huh. already been working with animals for a long time. And I had no idea how I'd like be able to make money like working for animals. Cause I would use like the apps where they kind of take part of a portion of your pay. Um, um, if you're working. So I started, um, I figured out if I raised my prices, I could um, start my own business. And so I... And then word of mouth goes crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lot Good of people. For you. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. Very busy already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, people, Americans, what they'll spend on their pets <laughs> yeah. is absurd. And you are the beneficiary of that. Good for you. Yeah, they'll spend more on them than their kids. You know. <laughs> Pretty much. Way to go. Way to go. Yeah. How's it feel to be free? Uh, it's so awesome. It's definitely a weight uh -huh. off my shoulder. Yeah. Well, you're smiling, bro. That's for sure. I'm so proud of you. Okay. Now you've been through all this stuff. You kind of resisted for a while yeah. and then you went all in. Uh, what do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Um, it's okay. So definitely just like believing. I know you, if you think you can't do it, you can do it because I didn't ever think I could do it. I've never saved. I've never had any money in my bank account, like ever in my whole life. And now I do. Um, and like just waking up every day, it it's a, could be a good day, whether it's a good day or a bad day, just like um, the one thing that doesn't change is like your goal to be debt free. Mm. That never changed for me. Mm. Mm. It changed your confidence overall, didn't it? Yeah, it changed everything. Now like, that you've got some money in the bank mm -hmm. because it means you are in control now. Yep. There's some a agency, some idea that you have the dignity of your destiny in your hands. Yeah. And then you go open a business and it's going to go zoom, zoom. Yeah, never thought so I would cool. do that ever. <laughs> That's so cool. So proud of you. Thank you. Very well done. And I'm sure Rebecca is. Yes. They came down here to cheer you on. Yep. Right? They're her yeah. whole family. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. They should. They should. Very good. Well, we're proud of you here. Way to go. Absolutely well done, Abby. Excellent, excellent job. We've got the uh, Live and Give bundle for you to say thanks for coming all the way down here from Indianapolis to do your debt-free scream. That's the Total Money Makeover book uh, and the Baby Steps Millionaires book. That one's uh, uh, that's definitely your path from here on. And uh, another membership to Financial Peace University, you can give that to someone and help them get started on their journey because I'm sure a couple people have asked what happened that caused that big smile. 
because it's, I bet it's different now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Very, very well done. Abby from Indianapolis, $52,000 paid off in 29 months, making 48 to 68. Most importantly, though, lands in her own new business. And that just, as this is how America works. I love it. Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt free. Yeah. There it is. That's how it works right there. Oh, man. Beautiful job. Absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. That, she's inspiring. Oh, completely. Now, she goes from victim her whole life financially to now she's a victor. She's in total charge, got an incredible future, doing something she loves. It's unbelievable. It, well, no, that's not true. It's very believable. We see this all the time. Yeah. And you've been seeing these career breakthroughs like this on your show everywhere. Now we're going to take it on the road. we got the career breakthrough oh, events yes. in Kansas City, April the 20th, Chicago, May 16th, Atlanta, Georgia, May 18th, and Dallas, Texas, May 23rd with Ken Coleman. What are you going to be talking about? I'm going to be talking about the formula to make sure you break through what's been holding you back professionally and financially. Dave, you said for decades that your income is your greatest wealth building tool, and we also know that everybody longs to make their mark in this world. World. So we're going to be talking about clarity, confidence, and courage. They're not a mystery. That's a formula. Because if you want to break through, even financial in your life, you've got to have clarity, which will give you confidence to step out and courage to stay on the path. And then, which is actually you know, what Abby did. This is exactly what she did. Yeah. She she saw a plan. Not only in her starting her business, but in getting out of debt. So the baby steps are clear path, getting clear. What's the problem? What's the solution? And she got clear. And then she got to, around people at Financial Peace. And that's where the confidence comes in that she can do it. And then she stayed with it. So uh, it's going to be a fun event, Dave. These are uh, these are really fun and intimate theaters. I'm going to be taking questions live from the crowd uh, after speaking and sharing that formula so that people can walk away with absolute confidence to do what they were created to do. And here's the benefit of that. More money and more meaning. Kind That's of, what we're going to give people is the the ability to get over. Dave, you hear this all the time. Imposter syndrome, fear of failure. I, I got an idea. Which is the best idea? That's what we're going to be addressing. People that want to get ahead financially and professionally. Career breakthrough events are going to be small, intimate events where yes. you're able to take questions and deal with it and help people all the way through. You're going to get a get clear assessment as part of your $50 ticket. Yep. And they're going to be Kansas City, Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, all in April and May. To get your tickets, go to RamseySolutions.com slash events. Don't miss it. Ken is coming to a city near you. This is The Ramsey Show. Ramsey personality is my co-host today. This is the Ramsey Show. Common sense for your life and your dollars and cents. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Charlotte's in Burlington, Vermont. Hi, Charlotte. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I just kind of want to preface with a lot of this stuff is new to me. Um, I've kind of just been a big saver most of my life. So now I'm kind of learning a lot more from you and other people in my life about just handling my money better. So, cool. um, yeah, I am kind of at a place where, like I said, I had secured like 45,000 in my savings and it, my parents and other people are like, you got to kind of do something with that money. Um, I am debt free. So there's not, um, that going on anymore. Uh, but I, yeah, I basically have set up a Vanguard account, and I don't have retirement through my job, so I, I put like twelve thousand in a Roth IRA. But then I have that remaining, um, like twenty three thousand, 
and it's kind of one of those things where I'm not really sure what to do with it. Um, I, I don't, like I said, it's not in my savings anymore. I want to be investing in and um, doing something with that money, but I'm not necessarily sure what direction to go in. I don't have like an immediate goal of like, well, I want to buy a house at this point, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So I just kind of want to be wise and planning for the future, but doing something with that money now. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you're doing great, by the way. You're, 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 in, the t- you're in the top three or 4% of Americans because you actually save money which makes you very, yeah. very weird in a good way. Okay. So, um, that, that's very cool. Good job. All right. So the first thing we Thank teach you. people to save for is for emergencies and you should mm-hmm. have some of this money set aside in a simple money market account just for emergencies. And the amount is three to six months of household expenses. What's it take you to operate yeah. if you had no income for three months and six months and somewhere between there would be the amount. Do you have any money earmarked for emergencies now? I do. I have about like twelve thousand set okay. aside. And what which, do you make? Yeah, I make forty four thousand a year. Okay. That's probably pretty close. Okay, so if you wanted to put a little bit more in, it wouldn't hurt anything. But twelve fifteen thousand okay. dollars is probably going to be in really nice emergency fund, and you never touch okay. that except for emergencies. Right. Once you label that account the emergency fund, you can't use that money unless it's an emergency. Okay. And I want a new car is not an emergency. I want to go on a trip is not an emergency. You following me? Yes. Okay. So we've got that money labeled and it's kind of just sits there, doesn't do anything. It's your insurance policy against life bringing you crap. Okay. Yeah. Now, Mm -hmm. then once you've got that, then the second thing you save for is you save for purchases. Mm -hmm. And so if you're going to move up in car, you're going to buy a couch, you're going to go on a vacation, you're going to save up and pay for that. And I would do that in a separate account so it doesn't get mixed up with emergencies. And Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't sound like you've got anything on the horizon. So if you don't have that account today, that's okay. And then that leaves you how much money? Um, yes, I have 23,000 left to do okay. something with. And, and you I put that in a Vanguard my... account, you said. What type of Vanguard? S&P yeah. 500? Um, it's an individual brokerage right now. Okay. All right. I would personally just park it in S&P 500. It's going to do okay. whatever the stock market does. It's not a lot of risk. Okay. Uh, okay. it's not super... Uh, it's just going to do whatever the market does. If the market does good, it's going to do good. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've got a bunch of my personal money sitting in that right now, S&P 500 fund. Mm-hmm. And, and because later on you're going to use that probably for a house in the future, would you agree? Right. Yeah, that's kind of my yeah. like longer-term goal, but it's like I don't have yeah. time But like today that. we're not ready to do that. So we'll just label yeah. that future house fund. Mm-hmm. So the good thing, to, what I'm teaching you to do here is the, the little bit of fine-tuning to your already good ideas is just labeling these savings accounts. Yeah. Yeah, and then you need to get your Roth IRAs going and have that be part of your budget, that you just mm-hmm. automatically each month have it drafted out of your checking account into a good growth stock mutual fund for your Roth IRAs. If you don't have an easy way to do that, click RamseySolutions.com, click on Smart Vester, and you'll find one of the people in the investment world that we endorse in your area that we recommend. They'll have the heart of a teacher, and they'll sit down with you and help you decide what's best for you in this situation. And probably get those that other in Roth IRA that you've already done moved over there as well and get it all moving. But you're really, really, really doing a good job. Yeah, I, I love what you just shared with her because here's someone who's already figured out savings. Now we put some strategy to it by being specific. And so she's got the discipline part and she's going to win big because of what you just laid out. Because now she goes, oh, there's a strategy, not just saving in general, but saving specifically. Yeah, here's what's weird. A natural saver like her, mm-hmm. someone who saves just because they love saving money. Mm-hmm. And, and certain people, my wife's that way. A natural saver like her will not keep up with a and an, a person who does intentional investing and labeling of the accounts. That's right. Even though they have a more natural strength in the area, they will not end up with as much money because they they get their uh, release from just having saved, mm-hmm. even though they did it poorly. Right. And so somebody pushed her to become an investor, yep. not just a saver. Yeah. And that's the difference. Saving is you're loaning money to the bank. Investing is you're becoming an owner of something. That's right. 
And that changes the whole equation when you do that. Jason is in Salt Lake City. Hey, Jason, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Better than we deserve. What's up? So my wife and I, we've been following the the debt snowball program, and we've made it to where we just have our student loans and our mortgage. Um, And we're trying to decide if we should sell our house to pay off our student loans or if we should try and figure out a way to uh, pay off our student loans um, with the interest and everything starting up. Man, that's sad. I'm sorry you're facing that. How much student loan debt have you got? 196000 Ouch. Who's the doctor or the lawyer? Uh, my wife's a speech pathologist, and I do physical therapy. Hmm. Household income over 200 then? No, not right now. Um, it's right around 120. Um, my wife's working part-time with oh. four children. And so um, I had three from a previous marriage, and we have one of our own as well. And for daycare for all of them, it's about $4,000 a month if we were to put them in daycare. So she's working part-time, and I'm currently working full-time, and we're looking at maybe doing some other side hustle stuff here shortly. Best side hustle thing she could do is more speech pathology. It pays right, unbelievably right. good. It pays better than yours does uh, yes, as, does as a side hustle. So, yeah, anything we can do to get her doing more of that, even if she's doing it at, uh, somehow working from home as individual clients or something while the kids are napping, anything you can do like that to is get your income up is going to be a good thing. Um, right. So the only reason I would sell your home is if I had lost hope that I could knock out the student loans in a reasonable period of time. How old are the kiddos? What's their right. age range? Um, their age is six months to eight years old. Okay. So, I mean, you got a long four years in front of you. Yes. I mean, when the youngest gets to kindergarten, she could kick it in a lot harder, right? Right. And uh, until then, you're going to be doing this on 100 to 150 a year with four kiddos, little ones to boot. Um, and, you know, if you did 50000 a year for four years, you'd be done, right? Yes. That, but that'd be uh, hard. Our interest rate with, it, with our interest rate starting back up, it's over $1,000 a month in interest on our first student loans. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. One quick thing yeah, I want to challenge whole, you. That's a whole $12,000 a year. That's not going to be your problem. Your problem is... Uh, getting enough cash flow to throw at this as fast as you can. Which, to that end, Jason, really quick challenge. My wife went back to work for a season. And we had three kids. They needed, you know, some care. And if you're connected in your community, I'd be looking for an elderly grandmother who's still healthy and loves kids, who's just looking for some side money. You got to see how can we cut from four thousand dollars or almost five thousand a month on daycare to maybe twelve, fifteen hundred. That's a way to allow your wife to work more and cut your costs. Yeah. Got to get crazy innovative right now. Yeah, you both took out expensive degrees in areas where you both have the ability to make north of 100000 But it's going to obviously require working to do that. So you can clean up the mess, but it's going to be you got to get shovels. you got to get shovels, and that's what we're trying to help you figure out. I'm not trying to put her to work. I'm just trying to get, out, get you out of debt without selling your house. I'd sell your house as a last resort to answer your question, and I don't think you're there yet. This is The Ramsey Show. Dave here. You can find all of our shows with the Ramsey Network app on your smartphone. It's the only place to listen to the entire back catalog of episodes. Download the Ramsey Network app in your favorite app store today. Headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Pods Moving and Storage Studios. It's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for being with us, America. The phone number is 888 825 5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, host of The Ken Coleman Show, and author of the number one best selling book, Paycheck to Purpose is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Donna, starting off this hour, Baltimore, Maryland. Hey, Donna, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So I am looking at retiring within five years, but I want to get 
my dream car before I retire, and I hope to have it this year. <laughs> so I'm calling because with my pro- financial profile, I want to know what would you do if you were in my shoes. Okay. What's okay. Your, what is your net worth? How much of an nest egg do you have? Well, um, I'm single, I'm 62, and I have a retirement fund that's valued at 533000 um, I do have a home, but I have a mortgage that is about 97000 is left on it. What's it worth? About 275000 Okay. All right. So you got a net worth of about $750,000. And do yeah. you have any money other than that? Not really. I just have my emergency fund. Okay. And what is, what's the dream car cost? The dream car is a used car, and I'm budgeting 40000 for it. It would be maybe like a Lexus. I want an SUV, so it would be maybe a Lexus or a Volvo or maybe a Genesis if mm-hmm. I could find one within my price range. I like it. And what do you make? Um, my gross amount is 163 mm-hmm. My take-home is 93 and I, I guess that's about seventy two hundred um, each month. Okay, what have you got coming out of your check? I know I seem to have a, a lot. I looked at that too, and it was like great day in the morning. I mean, I have my <laughs> medical insurance, my my dental. I have my um, retirement money uh, that comes out vision, um, and I just I'm single and I I pay a lot in taxes. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Whoa, we don't pay that much of taxes, but okay. All right. Wow. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, well, whenever you can pay cash for it, I would buy it. So, Dave, here's the thing. <laughs> Here it comes with my plan. Because I can take money from my retirement without uh, being penalized for it, I was, and, and, and the goal is I would, what I would like to do, but if it, if, but I don't have to. I'm just telling you in my heart mm-hmm. what I would like to do. I would like to buy this car maybe this year or next year at 62, 63, so that I can have some years of driving it. Well, you're like 20. <laughs> I mean, years. Uh, so, um, 20 years for y- driving? Y- you make $163,000. Yeah, I mean, you're probably driving to your 80. I um, hope so. I do too. Um, or you'll be gone. Well, I mean, there's there's a lot of choices here, but yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I just bought a truck, and I never dreamed it would be the last truck I would ever buy. I never thought about it. I'm 62, also, so I just don't think that way. But the uh, uh, too much drama on this car purchase. But yeah, I I don't know why you can't save up forty thousand dollars making one hundred sixty grand. Like in a year, I don't in know a year, why either. But my in numbers when oh, I'm sorry. What in a year, you? in a year, one year. In one year, yes, forty thousand mm-hmm. out of one hundred and sixty. Now I'm also trying to pay down my house, so I'm also taking a lot of that take home money and throwing it at my mortgage. Also, that's that old money's finite thing. It's going to go one place or the other. Right. So if you yeah. want to slow down the paying of your house, I would do that before I would pull money from retirement. Okay. Yes. But I do want you to get your house paid off. I don't want you to buy this car. And I want you to keep money, putting money in retirement. I'd love the house to be done before you retire. Right. And that's what I wanted to do, too. Yeah. That's, and buy the, and buy the car. Yeah. Before I retire. Because yeah. I'm debt-free except for yep. yeah, the I, yeah, your house. Yeah. Your house is debt-free. And you've got, you know, 550 that turns into 700 or whatever. Uh, and you got a paid for car and your emergency funds in place. That's what we call being set up for retirement. You did a great job then, but you need to try to lay out the numbers. I don't care which order we do it in. Let's pay off the house and then buy the car or buy the car and then pay off the house. But I would not drain retirement to do it. I don't think you need to here. I think you got a fabulous income, Donna. And you got a lot of options. Yeah, and, and she's been disciplined, you know. She's so got, far. So far. And now all of a sudden this it's car, like, this yeah, car thing. I got to have this car right now, you know. And you know what? The thing about the, thing about the car is, is that it'll be very exciting for her for about a month. And then you pretty much adapt pretty quickly. That's just how we humans are. It kind of wears off no matter how awesome it is. doesn't mean you don't appreciate it. doesn't mean you're not grateful for it. But the buzz that she's feeling right now, the, the pull – 
<laughs> it's going to wear off pretty quick. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's a car. It just, I mean, maybe it, a thirty thousand dollar car. You know, why does it got to be forty? Ah, there you go. And then move up later in car. Buy a thirty, and then buy a fifty later, like after you retire. I mean, if the goal is to pay off a house, then I wouldn't stop that much. I wouldn't slow down very much on that. You know, cars are interesting emotionally. Yeah, oh, because time. they're a large physical item, mm -hmm. and um, we tend to think when we buy one that it's going to be around longer than it is. Mm. It's it has it has because it's large, yep. it takes up space. Mm -hmm. It it feels emotionally like it's going to be around. And we really go through more cars than most of us think. Oh, sure. She's she's the way she's talking about that. She's going to have it for twenty years, <laughs> you know, and probably not really. Mm -mm. Probably not. I mean, a, you know, a twenty year old. If you're I've got a million dollar net worth, you know, a twenty year old SUV is probably not what you're driving. Right. Well, just to be real, Lexus, even if you're eighty, a Lexus SUV at forty thousand still's got a good chunk of miles on it. You know, it's not a it's not a low mile product. Those SUVs are expensive. No, oh, yeah. I so heard the rumor. Yeah, so. yeah, right. So, it's which is crazy. Well, I mean, it's fine, but but it's interesting. It's you. We assign the type of permanence to a car purchase that yeah. we assign emotionally that we assign to buying a house, mm -hmm. and it's just not the same. No, you can jump in and out of cars. You don't oh, want yeah. to, but I mean. If she bought that, my point is three years from now, she could easily upgrade. Mm -hmm. So you're right. Buy a 25. Yeah, it's and, probably and, a sizable upgrade for you know, her. And then move to a 50. That's correct. You know, uh, three years from now after the house is paid off and you're 65. And because it's not like you are, you know, you can buy a car at 65 and never buy another car again in your life. You right. can do it. But, um, you know, as long as your health holds out and your ability to drive holds out, it's not likely. Yeah. You're likely going to upgrade, change, do something. It's we. How long do people generally keep a car in America? Not that long, really. It, it'll fool you. I'm going to drive it until the wheels fall off. Yeah, it says everybody and nobody does it. <laughs> That's true. It just doesn't happen very often. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host. Uh, a lot of folks have questions about taxes right now. We get that. Here's a question from one of our listeners. What's the difference between an itemized deduction and the standard deduction? Well, the standard deduction is a set amount that you can subtract from your taxable income. It's like your automatic tax freebie. The amount you can get deduct based on your filing status, let's say you're single, you make 70000 your standard deduction knocks off $13,000, so you only pay taxes on about $57,000. An itemized deduction is one of the specific expenses the IRS allows you to deduct, to deduct from your taxable income when it's time to file your taxes, stuff like charitable giving, your home interest, that kind of thing. And so in the example of the guy above, if... Uh, if you're giving and your itemized deductions, you're giving your home interest doesn't exceed 13,000, then you would not do itemized. You would just take the standard deduction because you get more sack saving, you get more savings on your taxes than you can actually write off with the standard deduction that's given to you before you do anything else. That, that's the way this thing works. Now, here's what's interesting. They raised the standard deduction considerably. It's up to 27.7 for a married couple. You don't pay taxes on $27,000, okay, um, to the point that you've got to have very serious itemized deductions. That was raised on the Trump administration. You have to have very, very serious itemized deductions to even bother with doing an itemized filing. 
Um, and consequently, only 13% of Americans last year did itemized. 87% did standard. So let me help you with another part of that then that's interesting. The idea I'm going to keep my home mortgage because of the tax deduction doesn't apply unless you don't take the standard deduction. So, and 87% don't. So people saying they're going to keep their home mortgage for the tax savings is uh, mathematically a bunch of crap because most of you aren't. 87% of you are not writing off your home mortgage. You're taking the standard deduction. And so that's just malarkey. So that's just kind of how the tax thing works there. Um, most people are going to take the standard deduction. Again, 87% do. And the reason is a married couple would be as high as 27.7. Single, 13000 some change. There you go. So for more tax tips and software that can help you file with confidence, uh, go to RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Ramsey Smart Tax guides you through the online filing process with low upfront pricing, no hidden fees, and we're not going to try to sell you a credit card like they do at TurboTax. So just want to be real clear about that. RamseySolutions.com slash smart tax. Lee is in Denver. Hey, Lee, what's up? Hi. So... My question is, how do you prepare for what feels like a perpetual financial disaster? It's like I get through step one and start working on step two, and then something comes up, and step one is totally back to zero. Okay. Sounds like a lot of drama. Um, yeah. <laughs> perpetual financial disaster is not one I've ever heard. That's interesting. So uh, you you just had you, – you, you, you can't seem to get ahead because you get getting, keep getting kicked off the ladder. Is that what you're saying? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So what happened? Give me like two or three of the examples. Okay. So it really starts back in November. My boyfriend broke up with me and moved out, and I was stuck paying for um, the place I live by myself, which is 1600 a month. Have you moved? And then... Uh, no, and the reason I'm not moving is I did find a roommate, but my landlord actually really likes me as a tenant and said that he would drop my rent $200 if I signed another lease come May. And what do you make? Um, so last year I made about 60000 Right now it's looking like way less than that because I started a new job. Um, pursuit of a career instead of a dead end job. Okay, this is not a perpetual financial disaster. This is perpetual bad decisions. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that is really um, causing a financial disaster is I got a car a year and a half ago. I've been working on paying it off because it does have high interest on it, and it got stolen two weeks ago, so it took away. Praise my God, did it have insurance? Income. I did, yeah. Good. Coverage. You got out of the um, high interest rate. They're going to pay it off, um, right? You no, know, so I'm upside down in the car, and because of how essential my car is, um, they're not totaling it. There wasn't a lot of damage. They found it the next day. Um, so I'm still stuck with the car. Um, and what I do with it is, I mean, I travel for my, I am in healthcare. I do sleep studies, but I also drive for Uber on the side to kind of, supplement what I'm making in health care. So how much do you own this disaster of a car? Um, about 10000 and it's worth maybe seven and a half. And how much are they going to give you for the damage? Um, they're paying, I think, about 3500 is the damage estimate on it, so not enough to total out the car. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's your interest rate? 21%. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I, I, again, I'll repeat myself. You have not had perpetual financial disasters. You've had perpetual bad decisions. Okay. 21% is in the stupid zone. Signing up for a lease you can't afford with your live-in boyfriend who takes off is in the stupid zone. You set yourself up for these things. These weren't things that happened to you. You caused them. Okay. Okay. 
So that if you want to stop having them, then that's the that's the way to fix it. Is we've got to start thinking with a clearer head. So what you what if I woke up in your shoes? What I'm going to do is put thirty five hundred on this car, and I'm going to work day and night, night and day, have absolutely no life until I get this car paid off, and I'm going to move out of this stupid apartment you can't afford with a roommate that isn't going to pay. That's your next bad decision and get you something very, very cheap that you can afford. Because if you had a lower rent and no car payment and you worked like a crazy person, you could have some money. Mm -hmm. And to that end, I'd stop doing the Uber because you're just you're putting more miles on your car. You can find other hourly jobs right now that can pay better than Uber and allow you to stock up more money and not be causing you know damage to the car and all of the gas money. You can do better on that second yeah. Third job, like give me an example, Ken. Well, Par Target so, at twenty bucks so, an hour. So yeah, take take a big box store like a Walmart or Target. You just look at it seventeen to twenty bucks an hour, you know, and you're pulling extra hours and work all the time. All the time. Let me tell all you something. Else. As a waitress, let me tell you, restaurants are dying to find people. You good, go in a good high end, right? A good right. nice restaurant where you're going to get good tips. Yep. I mean, you're just you're making more of your time. You're not driving that car. I want you working so much you are freaking exhausted and you have no right. time to party. Right. Yeah, and I was doing that last year. Um, I was doing eighty hours a week in security, and then security didn't pay anything. To another. Well, yeah, I was making I think eighteen hours doing security. Oh, that's better than I thought. Okay, good. Well, you've done yeah, it before. You um, can do it again, but this is going to be a shorter time span. And you're coming out on the other side debt free and walking the baby steps. And now you've got financial freedom. I mean, you should not ever have a boyfriend leave and leave you in a lurch yeah. ever again. Yeah. Because you've already done that one once. You don't have to do that one again. Uh, you should not ever sign up for a 21% interest rate on a car ever again. You've already done that once. You never have to do that one again. See, my goal when I was young, Lee, I did a lot of really stupid things. That's how I can recognize this. I mean, I got a PhD in DUMB. I've done every stupid thing you can do. But my goal was to never do the same stupid thing twice. And so once you've got a whole bunch of stupid things on your resume already and you never do them again, you start to become what they call wise. Because all the stupid stuff's more in your rearview mirror. That's yeah. what happened to me. Yeah, and here's what we now know. Now people ask my advice. <laughs> I know, amazing. But you know, here's the deal. You will change when your pain forces you to or your desired future inspires you to. And I think in this case, you got to take both of those, the pain and a desired future for a better life, and put them together and get after it. Bust it. Once you're going crazy, yeah, making a lot of money and doing nothing to spend it, Clear this car up, get out of that lease, get you a place where you, I know your landlord likes you. I bet he likes you. That's Yeah, I bet he does. Yeah. They, most landlords are good. Yeah. No. He wants to do her a favor for her to sign a longer lease. Yeah. He's such I'm, a I'm, nice guy. I'm going to help you out here. Yeah. Uh, nope. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Patrice is with us. Hi, Patrice. How are you? Hey, Dave. Good to have you. Where do you live? Long Island, New York. Well, welcome to Nashville. All the way here to do a debt-free scream. And how much have you paid off? 76000 All right. And how long did this take you? Two years and four months. Look at you. Way to go, kiddo. And your range of income during that time? Uh, about 40000 and my best year during that time was 80000 with overtime. Cool. Whoa. What do you do for a living? USPS, letter carrier. All right. So you, you get a lot of OT with that, huh? A lot of OT. People don't want to come to work, Dave. <laughs> they didn't want to come in, so you pick up the extra route. <laughs> yes. Okay, because you got the T-shirt that says if you're broke, go to work. Exactly, especially when it rains. People don't come to work when it rains. I don't even like it in the rain? <laughs> No. That's like a USPS thing. You're supposed yeah. to deliver the mail in the rain, the sleet, the snow. I mean, whatever, right? Uh, yeah, you would but, think. You would think. But that gives you opportunity. Absolutely. You can do whatever you want to do. Pick up. So what's it pay at OT an hour? 
Um, after eight hours, you get time and a half. So my rate is twenty-three dollars. My, my base rate, so thirty-four fifty. Yeah. And then after eight hours, I mean after ten hours, you get double time, so forty-six dollars. Yeah, you're reaching for that. I like it. How yeah. many hours were you working in a given week? Uh, anywhere from minimum sixty to even 72 hours wow sometimes 10 days in a row breaking all type of labor laws just <laughs> just working i'm all for some civil disobedience that's great <laughs> talk about hustle and grind no you get after question. it kiddo. yeah it's there it's what there. kind of what kind of debt was the seventy six thousand? all student loans okay what's your degree in uh, sociology and okay I, I don't use it and so now you're a letter carrier and i letter like carrier. it okay and you're making money i'm proud of you yeah. way to go how'd you get connected up this ramsey stuff uh, actually, I was doing some work at my uncle's house, and uh, I was like, dude, how do you have this house in Long Island? Like, you know, taxes is crazy. And he goes, I was Davis, and he hands me the book, Total Money Makeover, and, uh, and he showed me the YouTube videos, and I was just hooked since. And I listen to you every day when I'm on the route, you and John, Ken, and it keeps me going. Wow. Wow, that's right. I'll be thinking about that next time I'm on the microphone here. I know. Somewhere there's a letter carrier in Long yeah. Island. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Way to go. Yeah. Very, very cool. Where did you go to school? I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm going a sociology degree and $76,000 yeah. in student loans. I'm just curious. I started off at Nassau Community and okay. I transferred. I was there for four years, so I was there pretty long. And then I transferred to City College and uh, I wanted to live closer to the campus so the apartments there in new york city are pretty pretty expensive so i, I took out uh the maximum ten thousand okay. per semester and um i actually didn't start paying off i graduated in 2012 i didn't pay off till recently so yeah. all that time all that um, they're just, they're just laying came. there building up yeah it's just a true penalty yeah. it really is that and good yeah. for you you just said i'm over it yeah and if it wasn't for you guys i probably would still have that debt because where I live and my family, just people have debt. So it really was normal. It's kind of like everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. By the way. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's normal everywhere. Not just with you, but way to go. Yeah. What are you way dreaming about? Cause what you're do you want to do now? Because you can do anything, man. You <laughs> yeah. got, you got yeah. the stuff, girl. I, I want to I get into real estate, too. But like you preach, you, know, you have to cash flow. And mm-hmm. then I listen to people at my job, and they buy stuff on credit. They drive around BMWs and... They, and they don't work their shift. No, they don't. Come in. <laughs> That's <laughs> in really fact, true. some of them got repoed. But I definitely, um, I dream just to be a homeowner and uh, be a babysat millionaire. Um, I think and you're I on my, your way. Uh, one more thing I want to add that with the post office, they have a TSP, which is yeah. really, which is really good. And um, I'm doing 15% right now. And they got the Roth off. TSP now, too. Yes. Yeah, yes, get, drop it in that C plan. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> CNS. I, like it. I, I did pretty good last month. See it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. And people at my job say, well, I got kids and, uh, you know, I can't put that much in them. I'm like, well, stop going. They order lunch. Uh, they order, you know, I bring my lunch to work. You know, they'll go out and order food. You were eating in the car a lot, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, I always bring my lunch. They call me the cheapest one in the office, but... Uh, you're the richest one, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're the debt-free one, yeah, for sure. Everything's paid off 100%. How does it feel to be free? Oh, it feels great. I get to come to the Dave Ramsey show on a random Tuesday and call out of work, so, yeah. <laughs> I could do whatever I want, basically, yeah. Yeah, you got, you got, you got choices now. That's yeah. what it gives you. And you can choose a different career. You can choose to make the be- most of this career. You can choose a lot of different things. And yeah. You know, what's interesting about your story is, is that um, you took power. You, 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 you walked out of this very powerfully. You have a lot of power now that you didn't have. Yeah. Dr. John you, you believe in you, right? Yeah. He talks about um, carrying on these book bag, um, bricks in your, in your book bag. And um, it definitely felt like that. You know, you, you walk around life and you're like, oh, I got all this debt. How am I going to? And you're just going through life. But now it's like I, I own. I put the book bag down. You know, I, I own my life now and I can do whatever I want. You know, I don't even have to work for the post office come no. 10 more years. You know, once I get my um, 401k up, you know. I plan on maybe buying a laundry mat or something. I don't know. All these thoughts come in my head, but I could do whatever I want now. now so. And you know how to do it now. Yeah. 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 And so. by the way, Dave, the dreams will continue to flood through your head because now there's no limits. Yeah. So people that are in debt have a hard time dreaming. And and uh, it, there's no telling what's going to come out of that, that head and heart of yours. And you're going to do some incre- incredible stuff. You really yeah. are. 
<laughs> this, this, this one's special. Right yeah, here. yeah, she, she's yeah a, absolutely. There, 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 there's a work ethic. There's a swagger. Yeah, there's, 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 you're yeah. going. You're like, going somewhere. Like you said, Dave, there's money out there. He's got to go get it. It's yeah. America, man. <laughs> I got goosebumps, I mean, man. I literally have yeah. goosebumps right now. <laughs> Say it again from the back. If I can do it, I started at when I started working at the post office. I wasn't even a career employee, meaning I didn't have any benefits. I was making seventeen dollars an hour, but with the hard work and overtime. Man, I, I was able to make way more than that. So anybody out there listening, you guys can do it, no matter what you're doing, no matter how little m m money you're making per hour. I paid off $76,000, and the way I was able to do that was I actually broke it up into 10,000 markers. So every $10,000 in my head, I was like, all right, I'm one step closer. And to be honest, the last probably like 7,000 was the hardest because hmm. you're right there, but, you know, but yeah, that's did it. Yeah, it's harder to finish it off. Yeah. yeah. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Your why. You have to have a reason at the end. What's yours? Mine was to get a house. Oh. To be a homeowner. Good dream. Yeah. And and. Like your uncle, huh? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How'd yeah. you get this house? Read this book. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you, Dave. You're amazing. Yeah. You're you're amazing. I'm so proud of you. I'm honored to get to meet you. Very, very cool. I got a, I, I have a, a, an easy prediction to make. This, <laughs> this one's going to leave a wake. <laughs> oh, no question about it. So impressive. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, we got the Live and Give Bundle for you. That's the Baby Steps Millionaire's book, uh, the prediction of your future, and uh, the Total Money Makeover book to give away to someone that uh, you run into like you a few years ago. Very cool. And uh, Financial Peace University, if you've not done it yet, you should do it. If you have, uh, then give it to somebody and pay it forward here and help people get moving. So I'm so proud of you. Very, very, very well done. You're amazing. Let me ask you this. Who was your biggest cheerleader? Uncle? Uh, honestly, the podcast. Like I said, I listen to it. I listen to it every 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 day on my route. I'm out yeah. there every day listening, and it was, it's what kept me going. Because a lot of people don't understand when you, when you tell them, they they just man, what do you mean? Yeah, they don't. What do you mean? Just put it on a credit card. Like, yeah. So. When your when your broke friends are making fun of your financial plan, you know you're right on track. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, good stuff, Patrice. You're amazing. Well done. Patrice from Long Island, 76000 paid off in two years and four months, making forty to eighty with some serious OT. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. I'm debt-free! Yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo! Wow. So master class in momentum. You know, she said, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tackle the first 10. Believing you can. Yeah, and just getting after it. Believing you can and then doing it. Oh, man. It's just yeah. powerful. It really is. Powerful. It makes us glad we're here on these microphones every day. So true. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking for a second, everybody wants to drive Uber, and I'm not knocking Uber at all, but here we're talking about a postal carrier making $40 dollar, dollars an hour at certain points when she's double time. Ding, ding. Come on. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, James 3.13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Samuel Coleridge said, common sense in an uncommon degree is what the world calls wisdom. Ooh, I like it. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Drew is in Atlanta. Hi, Drew. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Hey, Ken. Good hey, what's up? Call. Uh, I'm just looking for some general financial advice. Um, I'm wanting to buy a house, but I'm also trying to plan for retirement. 
you know, I want to be a millionaire and I retire <laughs> like everybody else. But um, I have about um, $260,000 saved up in cash. Um, I don't have any debt. My car is paid for, but it is about 10 years old. Um, still runs fine, but I know I'm going to need another one in the near future probably. But um, just kind of trying to figure out uh, – should I throw all of my money or most of it at a house to try to buy it in cash? Or should I take some of it to try to start investing? Because right now, as far as retirement goes, all I have is my 401k. It's got about $100,000 in it. So How I'm old are you? Starting to try to 36, sir. Man, you're doing great. Congratulations. Where'd you get $250,000? Um, I just save a lot, try to live on little, you know. You're single? Yes, sir. What's your income? Um, before taxes, it's probably like seventy thousand, anywhere from sixty-five to seventy thousand, depending. Um, that's before taxes and four hundred one k and everything comes out. You're just a savings maniac. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Way to go, man! You've done great. I'm proud of you. Excellent job. What do you I'm do trying. for a living? I'm a nuclear medicine technologist. What's your, what's the, what's the, I'm just curious, what's the ladder look like for you financially? What's, what does it look above you? What does it look like above you? Um, there's no real ladder. It's just, you know, occasional raises. They're pretty small raises. Okay. But. Okay. All right. I hadn't heard that title before. That's, uh, sounds very impressive. Okay. Good there's for you. There's only 14,000 of us in the country, so it's not extremely common. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, what would I do if I woke up in your shoes and I had a hundred thousand in my four hundred one k? I'm thirty six years old. I make seventy thousand. I got two hundred fifty thousand, two hundred sixty thousand in the bank. Um, I would set aside an emergency fund out of that of three to six months of expenses, and I would buy a house. The rest of it, the house. Yeah, all of it. And uh, all of it. then, and then I would if you if that doesn't buy the house with cash, which it might not in Atlanta, okay then it, you know you finish paying off the house as your next big goal and as soon while you're putting 15 percent of your income away towards retirement and um into good in, you know into your 401k into good growth stock mutual funds roth 401k preferable um and you know you keep doing that baby step four 15 percent of your income into the four types of mutual funds we're talking about all around here all the time and um get the if you take out a little bit let's say you took out a uh put down uh uh two hundred and forty thousand dollars and uh you took out a sixty thousand dollar loan and you got a three hundred thousand dollar house right and you pay that off and okay. just uh, and you pay that off very very quickly and then once you've done that then you're headed towards being a millionaire very quickly because you got the real estate going up in value and now you're going to load up your 401k and your roth iras and do your longer term investing until you get to that million, but that's going to put you there in probably five years. About five years. Yeah. Okay. That's about how far out. So should I look at, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Um, should I look at investing any money now through like a, a firm like Edward Jones or something? Not, in, like not, not beyond 15%, 15% of your income 15%. going into 401k. If you're going to take out a small mortgage, your next goal is put it all on the mortgage okay. until your house is paid off. When that's paid off, then get with a smart investor pro at RamseySolutions.com. Find somebody to help you do investing, and you do your Roth IRAs, and you max those out, and you max out everything you can put over at work, not just 15%. Um, and, you know, then – we figure out what we're going to do beyond that if you want to do even more because you're just you just love saving money but that that's where i would start and that's going to get you there very 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 quickly you're going to be amazed because you know seven years from today you if you're doing all of that you're going to have three or four hundred thousand dollars saved in just your retirement alone and you're going to have a paid for you know four or five hundred thousand dollar house at that point yeah and i would also say it, it you're a saver so start saving now to replace that car you know, because it's it's you said it's running fine, but it's it's older and it's putting on some age. So, again, plan for that, and you're going to be great. Kevin is in Denver. Hey, Kevin, how are you? Good. How are you guys? Better than we deserve. What's up? Hey, uh, so I'm having some issues, uh, kind of budgeting with my career. I just started a new uh, career about two years ago. Started my own business, and it's peaking in the summer times, and it's pretty dead in the winter times. Um, so I picked up a second job in the winter 
to help kind of pay for things, but I'm having some issues with my work van. It's my only vehicle, uh, and they say it needs a whole new engine in it, so they're quoting me about 5000 for that, which is a lot more than the van is worth. So kind of trying to see how to get around that without uh, taking out a loan to get a new vehicle. Now, I take it you have no money. Yep. Uh, I don't have too much debt, about $23,000 in debt. Uh, On what? We have about... Uh, well, I owe 10000 to my aunt. She helped me pay for uh, my farrier school. It's the career I started, the new trade that I started. Um, she helped me pay for that, so I owe her money for that. And then I owe about 5000 from student loans that I used to have uh, when I went to college for the year that I went. Um, and then the rest is uh, credit cards, only about 3000 mm-hmm. Okay. And what, are you, and what are you doing at your side job? Uh, deliver packages for Amazon. What's that pay? Uh, about twenty dollars an hour, twenty seventy five. And you use your car? Uh, no, I use their vans. Okay, all right. And you have absolutely no money. I uh, probably have a thousand dollars. Okay, all right. I'd sell your van as is, and. Uh, Take the, the money with that and put the $1,000 with it and get me a little car to get around for right now. And then I would work like a crazy person this winter to put together the money to buy a $5,000 van by spring. Okay. And then let's get this Bye. debt paid off and start working through your debts from there. Uh, but I want you working like all the time. Yes, sir. Like so all I the time. Three hours at Amazon right now, and then I do uh, horses in the morning when I have time and on the weekends. Thirty hours. Forty hours. Oh, we need to do a lot more than that. Yes, sir. You, you need to be gone all the time. You're broke, man. For sure. For sure. For sure. You need some money, and I don't know where to get money except from work. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. That. What are you making in the farrier business? Uh, last year, I uh, didn't have a second job. I made just under 40000 Um Probably most of that is during the summer months. Uh, probably get around six to 7000 during yeah. the summer So months. if you made, made forty in the winter working like your tail off and forty in the summer, that's an $80,000 income, mm-hmm. right? And, and you can get this debt cleaned up with that and get a cash fan for $5,000. But, yeah, I, don't, I mean, you don't need a, a fancy van because you, you're going to beat the snot out of it anyway. Yeah, that's why I got a 2006 Chevy uh, yeah. cargo van right now, and I already had 170,000 miles. Yeah. And I put so that thing's going to bring a cup. That thing's going to bring a thousand bucks, like it sits, or maybe fifteen hundred, like it sits, with no engine in it, and mm-hmm. it's salvage. And you put your thousand with it, you buy a twenty five hundred dollar car to get you through the winter, just to get back and okay. forth to Amazon's. All you got to do, because you're going to be working all the time. Yep, and I still have uh, private clients for horses uh, in the winter time too. So that's kind of the issue with just a car yeah okay then we're gonna get a really junky two thousand dollar van instead of a car gotcha but pay cash for it no payments you don't need more payments you got enough payments no no sir i've never paid for a car i always pay cash for a car but you didn't everything else everything else you went in debt for so we've got to get rid of the payment plan here let's get this stuff cleaned up dude hey well done kevin appreciate you calling in we're here to help you if you need more Ken Coleman, good show. Thank you, sir. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Our thanks to Austin, Ben, James, Zach, and Andrew in the booth. The Booth Dudes did it again. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Ken. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey baby steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.